What's up, fifth graders? How are we doing today? Uh, we're super excited to be back, back on your guys' computer <laughs> through this video. I um, hope you guys had a good week, you know, uh, with all this stuff going on and have more time inside. I hope you, you know, spend some more time with your, your family and, uh, you know, maybe your siblings and all. Um, hopefully you guys opened up the word and, you know, got into it, kind of, you know, opened up, kind of uh, build your relationship with the Lord this week. Um, and hopefully you guys, you know, did that challenge we guys gave you last week because that was, uh, you know, a good little exercise that I thought would, you know, really be helpful for everyone. You know, I, I, we did it too. Um, but again, super happy to have you guys, uh, you know, back this week. Super excited to open up the Word and learn more with you guys. Um, again, just, just super thankful that we, uh, we have the technology that we can actually do this, that we can still, you know, even though it's virtually, but we can come together as a group, as a class, and open up God's Word and learn more about Him. Um, and what you know, what to do in situations, and, and how he, you know, views us and things like that. So we're super excited. Um, today we're going to be actually learning and looking at, you know, how fun the Bible is and how it's, you know, it's really you know, enjoyable and pleasurable to get into to read to, to read all the different stories. Because um, a lot of times people look at the Bible as you know a boring book, and it's really not. It's really like you know God's greatest love story towards humanity, and and you know that's everything but boring because it goes through everything all of humanity the ups and the downs um but yeah so today we're going to go over you know a story that basically just shows that that you know god's word is is a, a fun book and it goes over all these different things and takes turns that you don't expect um but through it all we see god's love and his mercy um for us um as humans and and uh what's greater than that right so um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer and then we'll get into it. So, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you again for just the opportunity we have to meet with um, all these um, guys and girls, Lord. We just pray that you would be with them, continue to help them and guide them um, in their walks, in their lives, Lord. Um, Holy Spirit, I pray you would just speak through us today, that you would uh, touch whoever's watching, touch their hearts to hear your word, to hear um, what you have for them um, in this video, Lord. Um, again, we, Lord, we just lift up our nation and our president and, and all those in power and, and the government, Lord, just continue to help them and guide them, give them wisdom on how to deal with, you know, the evolving um, situations that's going on outside um, of each of our homes, Lord. And again, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity we have to meet um, and, and just learn more about you and your word. Um, just be with us today, continue to help us and guide us, help us stay calm and relax and just to trust in, trust in you at the end of the day. Um, and look to you. So again, Lord, we thank you for all that, and thank you for Jesus Christ. We pray so in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Hi, guys. So today we're going to be talking about um, how fun the Bible is to get into, how enjoyable it is, and even though there's parts of it that don't feel like they're fun and enjoyable, the Bible as a whole is meant to be enjoyed, to grow closer to God. And so within that, we find some some truths that are hard, but also some stories that are kind of funny when you look at them. And today we're going to be talking about one of the more bizarre stories in the Bible. And there's a lot of them, especially in the Old Testament. There's a lot of stories that from an outside perspective just don't make sense. And without God, they wouldn't make sense. So we're going to be looking at one of those stories today. We're going to be talking about a story in the book of Numbers. So if you guys have your Bibles, turn with us to Numbers today. We're going to be looking at a story about how a donkey actually talked. And yes, that's true, because as you've been learning, everything in the Bible is true. It actually happened. It's real history. So let's get into it. So just jumping off that, can give you guys a quick little background about it. Basically, going to have two characters, or two main characters in this story. We have uh, Balaam and then Balak. Uh, I will say I cannot confirm or deny if I'm saying <laughs> those names right. But again, we have Balaam and Balak. So Balaam... Is basically he was he was a magician of the time and uh, he was a false prophet, um, but he was not one of God's chosen people. He was not a believer, but he was basically uh, putting curses on people and pretending to be and taking advantage of, of God's people and, and <coughs> excuse me and taking their money and saying he was representing God, um, but in reality he was using the Lord's name in vain and he was just pretending to represent the Lord and use it to his advantage, right? Um, and so any good words that came out of Balaam's mouth, or not, uh, any, not good words, sorry, um, that came out of Balaam's mouth were directly 
uh, replaced by God and the good words that came out of his mouth, they were actually from God himself, right? Um, and so through the story, we'll see how Balaam's motivations and his, his motives were not pure, right? And so the second character we have is, is Balak, and he was the king of Moab at the time, um, and he had a problem. And so the Israelites were being led into the promised land by God, and they were commanded to kind of just destroy everyone and take out everything um, by the Lord. They were taking back their land, and the Lord said, you know, without hesitation, destroy everyone and everything. And so they had just finished their task of wiping out the, the Amorites, and now they're onto the Moab, the Moabites, right? And so the people of Moab were, were, they were terrified because the Israelites had a, a bigger army than them. Um, and in fact, Moab was filled with panic because of all of Israel coming, right? And so Balak, again, the king at the time of Moab, uh, was going to pay Balaam, right, the first character we just learned about, to put a curse on the Israelites um, and the army, right? And he asked Balaam to um, come meet him. And that's where, basically, we're going to pick up reading. So. so this is where the story gets a little bit crazy. So Jay just told you about how the Israelites are going in to, they're about to go into, um, take over the Moabites. The Moabites are super scared. So let's read in the Bible and see what happens next. So we're going to read Numbers chapter 22, verses 21 through 23. So the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and started off with the Moabite officials. But God was angry that Balaam was going, so he sent the angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block him. As, Balaam's, as Balaam and two servants were riding along, Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in hand. The donkey bolted off the road into the field, but Balaam beat it and turned it back to the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood at the place where the road narrowed between two vineyard walls. Then the donkey saw the angel of the Lord again. It tried to squeeze by and crush Balaam's foot against the wall, so Balaam beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved farther down the road and stood in a place too narrow for the donkey to get by at all. This time, when the donkey saw the angel, it lay under Balaam. In a fit of rage, Balaam beat the animal again with his staff. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. What have I done to you to deserve your beating me three times? It asked Balaam. You have made it look like you have made me look like a fool, Balaam shouted. If I had a sword with me, I would kill you. But I am the same donkey you have ridden all your life, the donkey answered. Have I ever done anything like this before? No, Balaam admitted. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the roadway with a drawn sword in hand. Balaam bowed his head and fell face down to the ground before him. Why did you beat your donkey those three times? The angel of the Lord demanded. Look, I have come to block your way because you are stubbornly resisting me. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. Otherwise, I would have certainly killed you by now and spared the donkey. Then Balaam confessed to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I didn't realize you were standing in the road to block my way. I will return home if you are against my going. But the angel of the Lord told Balaam, Go with these men, but say only what I tell you to say. So Balaam went on, Bala on with Balak's officials. So even though Balaam still wanted to curse the Israelites, God would not let him. God is too powerful for that. He's not going to let somebody destroy his people who are finally entering into the promised land. So instead, God made him bless the Israelites. So let's read about that. We're going to read Numbers chapter 23, verses 18 through 26. This was the message Balaam delivered. Rise up, Balak, and listen. Hear me. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Listen, I received a command to bless. God has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. No misfortune is in this plan for Israel. No trouble is in store for Israel, for the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. God brought them out of Egypt. For them he is as strong as a wild ox. No curse can touch Israel. No magic has any power against Israel. For now it will be, it will be said of Israel, what wonders God has done for them. These people rise up like a lioness, like a majestic lion rousing itself. 
They refuse to rest until they have feasted on prey, drinking the blood of the slaughtered. Then Balak said to Balaam, Fine, but if you won't curse them, at least don't bless them. But Balaam replied to Balak, Didn't I tell you that I can only do what the Lord tells me? Now, I told you guys this was going to be a crazy story, right? We got a, we got a talking donkey over here that's, that's literally talking to, to Balaam, right? We have um, you know, a, a stubborn king, and we got a guy that's pretending to be a person from God, right? Pretending to be a prophet when he's not, and he doesn't have the best, the Lord's interest at heart, at hand, right? Um, and everything we hear, like, this sounds crazy. Like, can you imagine sitting there, like, petting your dog or petting your cat, right? And they just start talking to you like, hey, this is crazy what's going on right now, huh? And, and you're just like, what? Like, crazy stuff, right? But one thing we have to remember, right, and we always come back to this when we're reading the Word of God, is even though it may sound crazy, it's what happened. It's true. Like this, this is a, an account of of God's interactions with humanity throughout all of history, right? And we have to remember that it, it is true, even though it might seem unbelievable at times. It is the truth, right? And so, if we even look at First Corinthians two fifteen, uh, one sorry, First Corinthians one twenty five, right? It even tells us this that the foolishness of God is is wiser than any human wisdom, right? And so we have to remember that even at times where we're, Things don't seem believable. Like you look at it, like a donkey, like a donkey can't talk, right? That's not believable, right? But we have to remember that God's ways are above our ways, right? And His thoughts are above our, th our thoughts, right? And so, when we look at these things, we have to remember that and realize, like, God's wisdom is is of a different world, right? It's of of the spiritual realm. It's it's higher than us. It's not of this world, right? And so we have to remember that, um, and just remember that God's ways are higher than our own, right? So, and like that verse says, like. God's foolishness. It doesn't mean that God's actually foolish, but to us, it seems foolish. It, that seems unbelievable, completely ridiculous. But even that, those ridiculous things are so much higher than our, than the most wise thing that our brains can comprehend. So that just shows you like how amazing and how powerful God is and how he can use anything, even what we would see, what we would say is impossible. But the Bible is filled with crazy stories like this. This is just one of the accounts in the Bible, and there's so, so many that are just as bizarre and yeah. weird almost even. But this is just one of them. This is just one of the stories that can be so fun to study. Like, that's a, I think that's a pretty enjoyable story to read. That's something that I'm like, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen next? But that's that's what the bible is the bible is for us to engage with god see how he interacts and that's fun that's enjoyable and sometimes it might always seem fun not seem enjoyable but the closer you get to god the real the more you realize that your relationship with him is has its moments of being fun it's always enjoyable even when it doesn't feel like it right right then you can look back and be like that was awesome my time with god was awesome and you can get that with any part of the bible so this is just one of those examples how the Bible can be so much fun in in such a way that we don't even realize. Um, that was fun for us us to study and us to look at. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, like, I always like this, like, like the stories of the Bible are, are really cool, right? And you, you have obviously some crazy stories, like like for this one, a, a, a donkey's Turk, uh, a donkey, mm -hmm. a donkey's talking, right? Or you have the story of Noah, of uh, Jonah, and he got e eaten by a whale, like a huge whale. Like, that's crazy, right? And there's, there's a bunch of these crazy stories, right? But at the end of the day, we also have to remember that those stories are awesome, and they're, and they're cool, and they're, and they're different, right? Which makes them fun. But the true joy, the true joy and the true fun of, of reading God's Word is, is actually reading it and building that relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, even if this story, this donkey didn't talk, right? And we learn how... God means what he says, right? And he He desires us to, um, you know, have pure motives and follow after him and, and try to emulate him. Yeah. Even if that donkey didn't talk, and I read this, you know, I read this story, and I take that and apply it to my life, and I go out and, you know, apply it to my life, like that in and of itself is the fun part because I'm interacting in the real world, following the Lord, and I see how he interacts with me, and that's what, that's where the, the true fun comes in, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, you start to engage and, and deal with and, and, and see how God's working in your own life with you personally. Not We're not talking about 
oh, this is how God handles all situations when um, when uh, when a human's mad. It's no, he's he's there for you when you're mad about this specific thing, right? And so, again, like all these stories are wicked fun and they're cool to read, right? And they should be. It should be pleasurable to open up, you know, this word and to see all the things that we as humans struggle with and to see how the Lord loves us so much and, and, and just the true love story of this whole thing because it's what it is. It's a love story of, of God rescuing his people and, and that's who we are, right? And so it's really fun to see that and to engage in that and, and learn more about that, right? So, And just think, guys, too, when when you have somebody that you're close with, maybe it's like your best friend, the more you get to know them, the more enjoyable your relationship with them is. The more you learn about them, the more things you learn that they can do, or um, the more you talk to them, the more stories you hear about them, the more memories you make with them, the more enjoyable that relationship is. And that's exactly how it is with God. These are His words to us. The Bible is His, His word. It's His words that we can read and like a letter to us that we get to read and study from and learn more about Him. And that's time spent with Him. And that's what makes it so enjoyable. So yeah, there's there's all these crazy stories and they're fun, but like Jay said, like the real the real joy is just spending that time with God, learning more about Him, and you can learn so much about Him, and that makes it fun, that makes it enjoyable, that makes the relationship stronger. So guys, just uh, kind of like a, a quick recap on everything we just kind of read and gone over. You know, um, number one, we have to remember that the Bible is God's message for everyone, for all people. Right? Doesn't matter where you're from, where you grew up, what nationality you are, if you're a boy or a girl, what, it doesn't matter who you are. God's word, the Bible, is for all people, no matter what, right? That brings us to number two, that God's Bible and the word is a message about himself, right? It's about God. Like I said earlier, like it is, it is the love story between God and his chosen people. The love story between the creator and his creation, right? And it's all about him and how he pours himself out to us to enable us to have that relationship with him and how he he goes down into our mess and saves us and how he um, does it all, right? Because that's that's who God is. That's what he's done and, and it's what he continues to do for us, right? And then number three, the Bible is fun to read, right? It, it it's, it's enjoyable and God wants us to learn about him. He wants us to crave it, right? And, you know, we have to realize that, like, like, I, like we said earlier, like, diving into, into the Word and learning about, one, all the cool stories that are in there that happened, right, is fun and enjoyable. But also learning about God Himself and how He interacts with humans in general, but also how He interacts with you and yourself on a, on a personal level, right? That's where the fun comes in. That's where all the joy and excitement comes in and how you see how God acts through your day-to-day -day life and when you're struggling with things and all that. That's where the true joy comes out of your relationship with him, with him. You can't you can't engage with God without reading his word. You can't have a growing relationship if you're not if you're only talking and not listening. And the Bible is how we listen to what God has to say. It's we're reading his words to us. So if we're only praying to him and we're only talking to him and only going to him when we feel like we need him because we always need him, right? But when we feel like we really like are like stuck in a bad situation if that's the only time we're really talking to god we're not growing and having a growing relationship with him because we're not listening to what he has to say and the enjoyable part of the relationship the most enjoyable part for me and I, i'm sure you would say this too and lots of others who have a relationship with god is the most enjoyable part is hearing what he has to say to us so i just hope you guys like realize that throughout this week yeah so like last week we guys give you a challenge to kind of you know, keep thinking and pondering on what, you know, what we've just learned and read through. Um, and so this week, our challenge is basically, while you're at home, right, we want you to basically take some time and read a new part of the Bible you haven't read before. Whether that's, you've never read part of the New Testament or the Old Testament, or you've never read creation story, or you've never really read, um, you know, Revelation. Like, I love Revelation, which is about the second coming of Christ. Or if you haven't read um, about stories that you know about, you know, like Daniel in the Lion's Den or things like that, and you haven't read those, go in there and read them. But also, <coughs> we want you to read it with the understanding that God can do crazy things, right? And and will and, and, and does do crazy things. So we just pray, um, not pray, sorry. We just want you to do that and, and be in prayer as you do that and just look to God through that. Um, but yeah, so that's the challenge we have. 
Um, again, just look at something new that you haven't looked at this looked at before, and and again, just realize what God can do crazy and amazing things, and that's the joy of seeing that happen, one, in your own life, and two, in the Word. And remember, too, there's going to be parts of the Bible that just don't make sense. That story we read, read and went through today, that didn't make sense. And you're going to come across parts in the Bible. I still come across parts in the Bible where I'm like, that just doesn't make sense. Why would God do that? But remember that verse that we read earlier. Even the things that we don't understand, the things that seem foolish, the foolishness of God, the things that seem foolish that he does to us, it's better crazier, wilder, and more loving than the wisest thing that we can imagine in our own human minds. It's so far beyond us that even though it doesn't make sense to us right now, it makes sense. We just don't understand it. God is so far beyond our finite minds for us to comprehend it right now, but someday it'll, it will make sense. It does make sense already. It makes sense and God, God knows what he's doing and he does everything he does out of his love for his people. And if you're his child, he loves you. And the things that don't make sense, don't overthink it. But know that his ways are higher than our ways. And that's that's what we have to kind of settle on when we come to those areas that just don't make sense to us. Yeah, well said. So I'm just going to quickly pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for this time. Thank you that we have the ability to, um, you know, get together with the fifth grader, get together with the class, and, and just talk this over, open up your word, learn more about you, learn how you interact with people, how you, you know, how you think and your ways, Lord, we thankful for that, Lord. I just lift up all those that are watching, Lord, I pray that you continue to be with them through this week, um, help them to stay calm and relaxed, to look to you, to, to learn more about you, and to uh, just strive after you in their their day-to-day -day lives, Lord, that they would look to you and, and build that relationship with you, Lord. Um, I pray that you be with everyone, keep us all safe and healthy. Um, and protected from, you know, all the craziness going on. And uh, I just pray that, you know, we praise you. We thank you for who you are and everything that you've done for us. And especially for, for sending your son Jesus to, to die on the cross for us, to take our, our penalty and make it possible to even have a relationship with you, Lord. So we're eternally grateful for that. Um, and again, thankful for all that you continue to do for us, Lord. We pray so in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, bye, guys. We can't wait to see you guys and hear about all the things that you're learning about God's word. Till next time, guys.